Hello, my name is Dan Swain, and today we're just going to quickly go through using Fluent and Hibernate. Okay, let's go. So, I've created a, a simple console Visual Studio project in C Sharp, and first things first, I'm going to add Fluent and Hibernate to the project. I'm going to use uh, NuGet to do this because it's new and cool and just generally makes life easier. Hibernate. There you go, install, off it goes. So brilliant, we've now got Fluent and Hibernate added to our project. It includes uh, and Hibernate itself as well, so no need to get that separately. Right, now, first things first, we need to add um, some entities that we need to persist to the database to our project. So uh, I'm gonna use a car example which I always do, and our car is going to have a make and a model and uh, probably a title or something like that. So let's start. Um, we're going to have a class called make. Um, it's going to have a virtual that's better, right? int of id. Now it has to be virtual because in Hibernate at runtime is going to magically sort of replace this with sort of data from the database. So that's why everything, all your entities kind of have to be virtual. But it's a small price to pay for the convenience that uh, in Hibernate gives us. So that's the make. And we're going to have uh, a model. Uh, the model can actually have a make. Makes sense. And we're also going to have a car. Uh, it's going to have a title and it's going to have a make and a model. Okay, so that's brilliant. So at this point, we've got uh, a car, make, and model. Uh, and now we need to, a way to sort of tell and hibernate how to persist these, or in fact that we should even bother persisting them. And the way you do that is we create what's called um, a class mapping. So what we can do is we can have a create a new class called make map, and we inherit from the class map uh, type, and we say make. We shall do its thing. Cool. So we've got a make map, uh, and then we just have to set it up basically. The way we do that, it's got some various methods on there. So, and it basically lets us tell and hibernate sort of what properties on our type are, in this example, the ID of the, top piece, uh, of the type. So we're basically saying here that the ID, the primary key, is going to be the ID property which is neat, you'll figure that out. And then we want to map um, name, and uh, that's it for, for um, make. Model's slightly more interesting. Let's um, just model, if I can type. Model map. And then this one we're going to say it references the make table. <clears throat> so basically, uh, this is basically going to tell them that we've got a foreign key relationship to the make table, as in a make or a model has a make. And we're basically going to do the same thing for the car. We've got one of those, and we've got more. Now, what we also need to say is um, what we haven't said is that in Hibernate, we haven't told in Hibernate that it should, if we create a series of classes, so if we create a car, which we'll do in a minute, and then we try and persist it to the database, 
and we've also created a make and model but we haven't separately saved them to the database first we'll get an exception saying basically that you're trying to save a car but you haven't actually saved the make and model first now to tell in home to get around this we can basically just say uh, cascade or which basically deals with the sort of hierarchy of the relationship as it were so that makes our lives a lot easier okay so we're doing well now so we've got our car and our make and our model and we've told in Hibernate how it should persist them and what columns go to what properties uh, what we now need to do is basically set up our sort of database connection now I've already created um, a database called Simple and Hibernate. If you look here, there's nothing in it at the moment, but it's there. Uh, and now we need to create uh, basically some configuration. Now, I'm probably going to cheat a bit for this because this takes a little bit longer than most things, and I've not got long to do this tutorial. But we need to create a class called In Hibernate Helper, or whatever you want, really. Um, we basically uh, we need to create a static view private. Uh, if we create a private static i session factory, private session factory, factory. Okay, and then we can create a property called. Okay, now we do something really a bit hacky. This isn't really the best way of doing things, but for demonstration purposes, this will do. Factory. Session factory to be a bit more. And we return to session factory. So what we're going to do basically is we're going to say if the session factory is null, then initialize a new session factory. That makes sense. Now this is the bit, I'm going to copy and paste this because this will take a bit of typing and I'm lazy. Here we go. But what we're basically saying is, we're saying the session factory is fluently configured. It's using a SQL Server 2008 database. Its connection string is this. You can put this in a uh, application.config or webconfig or whatever if you want. Um, but I'm using trusted authentication. The database is called Simple and Hibernate and it's running on my SQL Express instance. The dot show SQL um, basically means that when I run the application, it's actually going to spit out uh, the SQL that generates to uh, the command prompt, basically. And then, and this is the important bit, we're basically saying find all the class mappings that we defined previously and uh, get them from the assembly that contains uh, the type of car. So in Hibernate we use reflection to look through this assembly and find the type of car and then it will assume that all the class mappings will be nearby, which they are, they're pretty much next to it. Um, and then we've got the schema export, which basically, um, this basically says that Every time this runs, it should basically drop and recreate all the tables in the database. And then we build the session factory. And then um, what we also need to do is just have a public uh, static uh, session called open session. And then we can basically just And this is what we'll use in just one second to open the session. If it's null, it'll initialize the session factory and then subsequently it'll just use the same one. Okay, so let's just flip back. So let's just check it compiles. Yep, brilliant. 
So the next thing we need to do is actually persist something to the database. We do that um, basically by saying using our session, which is the nhibernate helper dot open a session. So it's going to initialize the session factory, and then because we're going to add, we're going to start it in a, a, a transaction uh, session dot begin transaction. Brilliant. And we're going to say var um, forward make. I'm going to start off making the the, the make. So the name is forward. That's really it. And Hibernate will also assign the um, ID. Um, we're going to have Fiesta model. Model. Oh, my host today. The name is Fiesta and the make is forward make. Cool. And then we're going to have a var car and we're going to have a make of forward model of Fiesta and a title of So we created our types, they're not particularly well related and they're not currently persisted in the database. And all we have to do to persist them is we just say session, save, car. And then we also need to um, sorry, commit the transaction. And then we can say created um, car. There we go, so we create a car. And we're going to rely basically on and hibernate to cascade the creation of the make and the model. So let's just run that now. Should we just put um, uh, we just put console.readliner just in case it ends up properly. All right. Sorry, you didn't see that, but basically there it goes. You can see and hibernate checking whether things exist already and then recreating all the tables we need and basically inserting all the things in the cascades worked it in, uh, looks like it's inserted the car, the make and the model and that's basically it, we actually have a working database just to prove it um, here's my SQL Server we're attached to the thing and um, we can see it's got the the values in the database. And there you go. Brilliant. Well, thanks a lot.